Hey, this is Stacy Hayes. I'm glad you decided to listen to The Prodigal Son. I spent over a decade thinking God was mad at me and he was some bipolar old man sitting on his throne with a lightning bolt in one hand and the hammer in the other just waiting for me to mess up. That's not God, that's religion. God loves every one of us no matter where we're at in life and he's waiting to see us coming to him like the prodigal son did in Luke 15, 11 through 24. Read it, you'll be glad you did. Believe what God's word says about you over any opinion you have of yourself and watch God work a miracle in your life. Now let's see what the word of God has to say today. Father, I praise you and I thank you for all that you've done. Lord, I praise you for your word and the truth in it. Lord, I praise you and I thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Guide and direct. Lord, use my mind. Lord, use my mouth that I might be a vessel that glorify you. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I'll be taking my scriptures today out of 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, starting with the 15th verse. It says, when And when... The servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth. Behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do, or what shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes and the young man, uh, the, and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. You know, if you go back and read that entire chapter, well, that's an inspiration of how God can, can back you up. I mean, back you up. And and Elisha was his man. He wasn't about to to uh, let him be be kicked to the curb over someone that disagreed with what was going on. Isaiah fifty two twelve. I've read it before. It says, "For ye shall go out with haste, for ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight." For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear ward. I'm going to read that in the New Living Translation. It, 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 it says, You will not leave in a hurry running for your lives, for the Lord will go ahead of you. Yes, the God of Israel will protect you from behind. I thank God for, for scriptures like this. It's an inspiration. An inspiration to know that no matter what position you're in, if you're God's child, He's going to back you up. He's going to protect you. He's going to help you. All you've got to do is look to Him. You know, these, we, we go out and, and we see a lot, of, a lot of people like this servant of Elisha. That servant... He was, the only thing he was looking at is what he could see. And with his fleshly eyes, and he seen doom. He seen an impossible situation that was not going to get any better for him. He asked Elisha, said, what are we going to do? You know, we're compassed about, we're surrounded. People, we've, we, 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 we serve one. We serve one that is far bigger than any problem that we can ever have. We're, he's far bigger than anything that the devil can throw at us. Elisha was surrounded by the Syrians. He was surrounded. Read that chapter. They meant to come in and kill him. They meant to come in and take over. What? But what did God do? Uh-uh. He had horses and chariots of fire right there watching after him. That all that worked out to, for Elisha's good. And, and that's what I want you to understand. The, the Bible says everything works to the good for those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. It don't say that everything works out to the good for everyone, but it says everyone that loves the Lord 
and and that's where we that's where we get a lot of things mixed up. That that's where a lot of religious people get mixed up. You know, they they say everything will work out to for for the good, and and a lot of times it doesn't. It don't work out to the for the good because they're not allowing it to. You know, that servant that servant he, he was looking at his flesh. He was looking at at what what you know what he could see. And I don't know that Elisha could see what that young man seen. But, but by faith, Elisha knew that God had his back. Elisha knew that more, no, no matter what went on, God was going to take care of that situation. God was going to make sure that he was taken care of. Why? Because he was God's man. Now, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you today. Uh, there's a there's a lot of Christian people out here that think that they're just they're just some just some downtrodden person that that God don't think no more than than He does of a servant. We're God's children, and and if we can come to understand that, come to understand that that He is for us, not against us. Religion has taught that that you better be good or he'll knock you in the head and lock you in a closet. And that's not true. That's not true. I if 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 my children told the lies on me that God's children has told on him, I I don't know if I could bear it. Because that that People have said stuff and done stuff and blamed stuff on God when he was a thousand miles from it. They blame sickness on God. You know, you know, God gave you cancer. You might have done something that that, you know, he just just made you sick to get your attention. That's a lie. The Bible says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He wants us well. He wants us whole. He wants us with our eyes upon him. And if we're forever sick and downtrodden and worried about paying our light bill and, and, and anything else that life throws at us, if we're constantly just worried sick over something like that, we're not going to be able to be effective for the Lord. I'm here to tell you today, quit looking at what you can see. Quit believing what, what you see with your eyes. But start looking to God, looking to His Word. Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll go with you always, even to the ends of the world. Now, I lived a lot of years thinking that He was off somewhere in the distance, just with a smirk on his face, like, you know, what a screw up you are. Instead, he was like the like the father in Luke 15. He was standing looking at the horizon waiting for me to turn around. And so he could love me and restore me. People, we've got to see that. We have got to understand that he is for us. He is for us. And I pray that God opens people's eyes to the fact that He's a good God. And He loves us. He loved us so much that He gave His own Son, suffered and died on the cross for our sins. And you say, well, I've never been saved. I'm not a Christian. I don't know, I don't know anything about being a Christian. Well, I'm going to tell you it's as easy as falling out of a tree. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you'll believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. That's all you've got to do. Believe in your heart and confess it with your mouth, and you shall be saved. Believe what? Believe that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead for your sins to justify you. He died on the cross at Calvary for our sins and was raised on the third day for our justification. We've got to believe that and confess that Jesus is Lord of our life and that he died for our sins. And if we do that, we're saved. We're born again. It, the Bible says, by grace are you saved. Through what? Through faith. 
through faith in Him and His sacrifice, His goodness, not in our own, not in our own. We are no, none of us in our own own power, own strength is ever good enough to stand before God. We're not, but yet He made us righteous. Why? Second Corinthians five twenty one says it. Said you. You are the righteousness of God in Him. Why? Because He was made to be sin for us that we might be the righteousness of God in Him. Now this servant in in this scripture, all he seen, all he could see was, was gloom, doom, death. But Elisha, uh, Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes. Open his eyes and let him see. Let him see what you're doing. Glory to God. That's something, that, that's something exciting to know that God's working on our behalf. You know, he's working on our behalf. He's, he's working and doing things that, oh, they need to be done. And, 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 and he's not going to be slack in what he's doing. He's going to work for you, but I'm going to be honest with you. He's not going to any, do anything that, he's, that you're not allowing him to do. Why? Because we have dominion, control over our lives, over this earth we live in. And we have got to, we've got to seek him and allow him to work in our lives. That, a lot of people don't like that. They say, well, God can do anything. Well, one thing he's not going to do is lie and contradict what his word says. And his word says we'll, he'll make man in his image and give him dominion over the entire earth. We have control of this. You know, religion, I call it no-fault religion, Wants to say that everything's God, it's God's will. God done it. No, God didn't do it. I'm sorry. No, He didn't. God's not the author of 60 million children being being aborted over the last 40 years. Sorry, that ain't not. I ain't sorry about it. I'm just telling you the honest truth. If you're gonna lay off 60 million babies being butchered since 1973 or 74 when it started. And that's just the ones that are documented. I'm not, I'm not talking about the illegal ones. If you're going to try to lay that off as being God's will, you need to look to the real Lord and Savior of, our, of mankind. He's not that way. He's not. He loves us. He cares for us. And He wants more than anything to see us just... Pull up to Him and love Him. Love Him and, and be strong in Him because we can't be as strong in ourselves. I'm going to go on. And uh, it, it's First Kings. It's backing up. But I've I done this purposely because I want, I want people to understand what, what, we, what we see in in what these prophets done and how they how they lived, it's the First Kings, the nineteenth chapter and the eleventh, starting with the eleventh verse. And he says, "Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord." And behold, the Lord passed by, and the great and strong wind rent the st- the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Get that. All these, these major things going on around Elijah. And it says, a, a still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it. He wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. 
Because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life and take it away. And the only Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria, and Jehu, the son of Nephtah, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphath, and Abinameh, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that he that escapeth the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees whom thou whom have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Now if you'll read back in this chapter, Read back probably another chapter or two. You can get get the understanding of what Elijah was doing. Elijah went up against four hundred and fifty prophets of Baal, and and he 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 made a mockery of what they were doing, and 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 called down fire from heaven to and proved to all these 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 uh, Baal worshippers that God was the God. And 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 uh, they they were trying to kill him. This woman just come up against him and 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 accused him and told him said I'm going to kill you, and 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 it was all all the things that that Elijah saw, and all the things that God done for Elijah in those previous chapters. Now, time don't permit me. But it would do you good to read that because Elijah, he stacked up a sacrifice on an altar of rock and, and, and then poured barrels of water all over it and soaked it. And God sent down, sent down fire and consumed the, 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 uh, the whole altar, the sacrifice, and the water just, got, just, just extinguished it all. And 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 just got, and Elijah saw that, but yet one woman, one woman, Jezebel, stood up and says, "I'm going to kill you," and he lost all sight of what God was doing. He lost all sight. The fear of what that woman told him drove him into the into the the into a cave into the wilderness. And and he he's out here thinking he's all alone. He's out here thinking he's all alone, and 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 he's expecting something to 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 happen. But it, that the the thing that that really stuck out in this chapter for me is that God, after the earthquake, there was an earthquake, and God wasn't in the earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after a fire, after the fire, a still, small voice. You know, people expect just something just to blow up, and and it be just spectacular in front of them of what God is trying to do in their life when He's really trying to speak to their heart. That still, small voice is what I have learned and and desired to hear. Not not some big production, not some, you know, explosion somewhere that gets everyone's attention, but that still small voice. Finally, Elijah turned around and looked and understood. He understood what he was what was going on. And he started listening. And when God, when God spoke to him, he said, you know, I'm the only one left do, trying to do anything for you. And at the end of that, that, those scriptures I read, he said, no, son, I've got 7,000 that have, has never been uh, bowed a knee to bell. You're not the only one. 
I've got your back. I've got your back. Elijah knew that. He, he finally understood that. After all that he had seen, and there's story after story after story of, of God doing miraculous things in, in, in his people's lives and people throughout the Bible. But yet you can see them quick, quickly, so quickly to forget what God has done. I pray that we open our eyes and remember what God done for his people and know and believe that he's no respecter of person. He'll do it for us too. That's, 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 my, that's my mission on this, uh, on this podcast is to let people know that God loves them just like he does the people in the Bible. That the abortion doctors that's killing the, these babies, God loves them just as much as he loves the babies. That's, that's, that was an eye-opener for me. An eye-opener to know and understand that, my God, he loves me that much. As an innocent child, don't ever let religion lie to you ever again to tell you that God don't love you. He loves you more than you'll ever know in this world. He loves you in a way that I don't think humans can ever understand until they see him. People, we've got, a, we've got a loving Father that will forgive us and forget about it. You know, this, this whole podcast is named The Prodigal Son. That's, this, this whole thing was built and, and started because of the things that I had went through and, and ended up coming back to God and realizing that he loved me just as much now as he did before. And he wasn't here to shame me. Luke 15, read it. God, that is a picture of God the Father. And that prodigal son is a picture of me. If there ever was a prodigal son, it was me. I stood before a holy God just broken. And he loved me, and he showed me love, and, and he didn't condemn me. And, and, and that's what I, you know, that whole story talks about the father seeing his prodigal son that it took all that the, that the father had worked for and went and blew it and, and goes out, and he's seen him coming. He never once ridiculed him or shamed him or condemned him for what he, how he had messed up, but he loved him. He restored him. He put him right back at the same table that he left from. Why? Because he's a good God. That's a picture of your father, your heavenly father, that wants to do that for you, that wants to love you that much and show you that love. But somewhere along the line, I allowed the devil to lie to me and religion to lie to me and tell me that there's no way you can ever get back to where you were. Now, that was a lie because I went back to where I was and just kept on going. Stronger. Stronger. Why? Because God, God blessed me. He loved me. And, and through His Word, I've come to understand that the religious lies that I have been taught over my lifetime and the condemnation that, that Satan has put over me over my mistakes were nothing but lies. Man's tradition. Man's, the Bible says man's tradition makes God's Word of none effect. It cancels it out. Why? Because it's contrary to what his word says. I want you to know something. The only commandment that Jesus said, Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. That's, what, that's where, where, where we get it wrong at. We're all about rule making. 
we're all about doing uh, doing everything a certain way and 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 a ritual and being good and that's that's wonderful if if you're you're striving to to be the best you can be that's wonderful but i'm going to tell you if you're not loving your neighbor as yourself you're falling way short because loving your neighbor as yourself fulfills the law that you're trying to live by that's what the Bible says. That's what, what God wants us to understand. If we'll walk in love, trusting in Him, and allowing His Holy Spirit to guide us, there's nothing we can't accomplish in this world. Absolutely, positively nothing that we can't see come to pass in our lives. Why? Because one, we believe God. Two, we're going to stand on His promises. And three, we're going to tell everybody that that is exactly what God, what God's going to do for me is what He's done in this Word and what He said He would do. People, we've got, we've, we've got a long way to go in believing Him. But I promise you that He will lead us and He'll guide us and He'll help us if we'll allow Him to. He'll love us. He loves us that much. I, I, I've, I have, I've often wondered how people can do their children the way they do them a lot of times. Because I, I have seen so much of God's love in His Word and come to understand that it don't matter what I've done. God loves me. And he don't he don't want to punish me. He wants to forgive me and wash me clean. Now, that's not a license to steal or to sin. That's not a lie. That's not giving anybody a license to sin because we've been sinning without a license for a long time. But that's that's coming to understand that God's grace is far bigger than man's ability to forgive himself or anybody else. That's God's love, God's grace. And I've seen people do it. I don't see how, in the, and they'll stand back and, and judge somebody and look at that. I can't believe they'd live like that. When, when they're as bad as they are for talking like that. Talking about people and, 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 and shaming people. Look, Billy Graham said it best. He said it's God's, it's God's place to judge. It's the Holy Spirit's place to convict. He said it's my place to love. And that's the truth in a nutshell. That's where, that's where I've got it wrong and multitude millions have got it wrong over the years trying to do God's job. My job is to love and leave the rest of it up to Him. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do regardless, regardless if anybody agrees with it or not. I'm going to love my fellow man, my children, my family, my friends, and anybody else I come in contact with, no matter how they act. And I'm going to let God do the rest of it. Because I'm not going to look and, and, and look at what I can see. But I'm going to believe what God's Word says. That He'll do a work in all of us if we'll let Him. And, and I'm going to believe that, that, that people are, are the, the worst people. Now, you may not like this and you may not can understand this. But I come, God showed me this years ago, that God loves Osama bin Laden, Saddam Hussein, Adolf Hitler, just as much as he loves me. He's no respecter of person. He loves those people just like he does an innocent child. My God, that's love. And, he, and those men are dead but if if they were alive today he would he would forgive them of their sins and 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 save them if they'd ask 
and if they'd accept him. That's all it takes. I don't care what you've done, how bad you've been. Quit looking at your your surroundings like this servant did. Quit looking at the gloom and doom and death that Satan says is just just right there for you. It's standing at the door about to get you. Mm Mm-mm. That's a lie. Elisha said, open up his eyes, Lord, that he may see. I pray this morning that God would open up your eyes that you might see and understand how much he loves you. Don't expect some earthquake or fire or wind, but listen for that still small voice that deals with each and every one of us on an individual basis. Listen and allow God to work in your life. Allow God, most of all, to save you and then strengthen you and guide you in every direction that He'd have you to go. And how you say, well, how am I going to do that? Get in His Word. Get in His Word and believe every word of it. Get in a good Bible teaching church and, and, and that teaches the whole Bible and not some denomination and, and allow God to minister to you through His Word. I pray this morning that you would allow God to touch you and strengthen you and to open your eyes to the fact that He's right there. Right there. He's got your back. All you've got to do is accept Him, believe Him, and allow Him to back you up. Hey, I'm glad you took the time to tune in. Feel free to get in touch. I like hearing from people who have found out that God's not mad at them and realize that He's there for them in every aspect of life. Don't go another day beat down over your past mistakes. Give them to the Lord and let His Word guide you. God bless you all and remember, the Lord loves the abortion doctors as much as He loves the babies they're killing. God is no respecter of person. He loves us all no matter what mistakes we've made.